guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to my next blind date with my bookshelves. Obviously, this is not going to be a monthly thing, as I had originally said when I started these last year. Maybe bi-monthly, if we're lucky. I think the last time I did one of these was in February, so it's been two months. But regardless, I put out the call on Twitter and Instagram. You guys know how this works at this point. So I asked for a bunch of coordinates, ranging from one through nine, which is how many shelves I have. Five here and four on my TBR shelf. And the second number was one through 100, which is approximately how many books end up fitting on one of these. It gets a little bit wonky when I have to move to the smaller bookshelf for my TBR shelf, but we make it work. Like I said, I put out the call on Twitter and Instagram, so let's see what coordinates we got. As always, I am so sorry if I don't get to your coordinates. I end up getting a lot more coordinates that I can actually use reasonably in one of these videos. I always aim for five books in each one of them, and I always end up with a lot more than five coordinates, so I just kind of try and pick randomly which ones I use. And since using Instagram is such a new thing for my blind date with my bookshelves, I try and split them evenly between Twitter and Instagram. Okay, so the first set of coordinates came from Instagram and that is 7 and 68 from Michelle's library. Okay, so for 7 and 68, I had Belgariad by David and Lee Eddings. I've been talking about this on my channel for a while now. This is volume one, which means it's the bind up of the first three books in the Belgariad series, which is Pawn of Prophecy, Queen of Sorcery, and Magician's Gambit. So right now we're in the midst of the Belgariad along, which is a Belgariad read along that I'm doing with Z from You Can't Catch Z and Lauren from Lighting Lavender. We are currently on April's book, which is reading Pawn of Prophecy, which is why this is on my TBR. Even though I have technically read it before, I am rereading it for the Belgariad along. I am reading Pot of Prophecy, book two. So let me talk about the Belgariad as a whole, I guess. This is a very classic fantasy series. It came out, if not in the late 70s, then in the early 80s. It's definitely full of all of your normal old fantasy tropes. There is a farm boy that is not like everyone else. Everybody's got secrets. There is a very fancy magical item that is very special and only he can end up wielding it. There's all sorts of that kind of stuff in here, and yet it's still so much fun because it was written at the beginning of a lot of that stuff. There's a lot of that now, but at the time it was fresh, it was new, and I don't think that this is the best fantasy series in the world by any means, but I do think that it is a good intro to people who are not familiar with fantasy tropes yet. So I think that if you are not familiar with fantasy or you like old classic fantasy tropes, this book is for you. It does read a lot younger just because in these first couple of books you're reading it from Garion's point of view, and he starts the first book as like seven or something, and and then he ages up as the series progresses. One of my favorites of all time just because of the nostalgia of it, but yeah, I love the Belgariad, so I will take any minute that I can to plug it on this channel. The second set of coordinates is 3 and 78, and that is from Eve Am Liz YA, I think. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. 3 and 78 led me to Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I own this. I have not read this. The only book that I have read by V.E. Schwab is A Darker Shade of Magic, but I've heard amazing things about Vicious, and as far as I know, it is about two college roommates. I want to say Victor and Eli. Pretty impressed with myself for pulling that out of nowhere when I haven't read this book. Anyway, it's about two college roommates, and they are very close to each other. I think that they are trying to figure out a way to develop superpowers, maybe, and then it kind of ends up being like their villain origin story because they end up hating each other and I think that this book follows them throughout the years as they fight each other or act as each other's adversaries. I'm not 100% sure of where this book goes. There is a second book called Vengeful. I do not own that one. I didn't want to pick it up until I saw if I liked Vicious or not. I would like to get to this at some point. I know a lot of people really really love these books so I mean superheroes, villains or not, like the whole thing, it's right up my alley so I don't know why I've been putting it off for this long. The next set of coordinates is one and one and that is from Heather from from HEA Booktubes over on Twitter. One and One led me to Lover Mine by J.R. Ward. This is a novel from the Black Dagger Brotherhood, which you may or may not be familiar with if you've read Paranormal Fantasy at any point in your life. I'm not going to talk about this because I don't think- oh I have read this one. I actually have read this one. Uh, the Black Dagger Brotherhood is very scattered for me. I have read a lot of them and honestly these definitely were picked up by me when I was too young to have been reading their contents. Adult vampire 
romance. That is the Black Dagger Brotherhood. Some of the books get into a little bit of BDSM. Some of the books are definitely darker than others. It is up to you as to whether or not you would like to consume whatever is in them, but J.R. Ward knows how to write a vampire story, okay? These are fantastic and I loved them from the time that I was a teenager when Twilight was not doing it for me and I needed other vampire romances. So Black Dagger Brotherhood follows a brotherhood of vampires. I don't necessarily remember what evil they are fighting, but there is a bad guy of some kind. Every one of them follows a different point of view vampire character and his love interest. This one is like the second round like the second series, I guess, in the Black Dagger Brotherhood, and it follows John Matthew. The first one, I believe, follows the king of the Black Dagger Brotherhood, or the leader of them. I want to say his name was Wrath. They've all got very interesting names. Um, Zadist is one of them. Wrath is one of them. I don't necessarily remember any of their other names because I haven't read Black Dagger Brotherhood in a very long time. Probably verging on 10 years at this point. Not because I don't enjoy them. I do. I just had grown into other things and the series is very, very long at this point. She's still writing them. She still has a very loyal following. I'm pretty sure that she's either good friends or like acquaintances with Sarah J Mass, and I think that Sarah J Mass takes a lot of her inspiration from J.R. Ward. So if any of that interests you, go ahead and pick up the Black Dagger Brotherhood because they're a fun time. After that is 3 and 66 from Stacy's All Booked, also over on Twitter. Next was 3 and 66, which led me to Wings of Shadow by Nikki Palpretto. This is book three in the Crown of Feathers trilogy. I don't actually know that it has a, a trilogy name. I'm not 100% sure on that, don't quote me. I read A Crown of Feathers back in 2020, I wanna say, and I absolutely loved it. It was so interesting and it was YA fantasy, but it was kind of on the older end of YA fantasy. It's about a girl who has magic in a world, once again, where magic is kind of forbidden. She and her sister both have it, I'm pretty sure. And the magic in this world is the ability to communicate with animals or commune with animals. And all this particular girl wants to do is go and become a phoenix rider. They're kind of like the army of this particular world. She wants to go and become a phoenix rider, but only men are allowed to. So she goes there and she, I think, doesn't actually intend to go there with the intention of being a phoenix rider. You know, she might actually have just gotten roped into it and ended up there and stayed disguised as a boy to save her own life. The details are a little bit blurry. Obviously, I need to reread Crown of Feather before I move on to the next books in the series. However she got there, she ends up wanting to become a phoenix rider, and she is very much in the midst of the Mulan trope where she is pretending to be a boy. Um, her sister and she have a very fraught sibling relationship, and uh, honestly, her sister is toxic as all hell, and very thoroughly comes through in the pages where they are talking to each other. But the relationship between her and the phoenix, and the relationship between her and her love interest, really drew me in in Crown of Feathers, and I cannot wait to move on to the next two books in this series. Also, these covers are absolutely stunning. I mean, they're beautiful. So, yeah. Definitely, if you haven't picked up Ground of Feathers, give it a shot. And then last but not least, we have Seven and Fifteen, which is from Shar at Shar Reads Books. Seven and Fifteen led me to Retribution by Sherilyn Kenyon. This is a part of her Dark Hunter series, and I love her Dark Hunter series. I've raved about her Dark Hunter series on my channel many, many times. I love Sherilyn Kenyon's world that she created with these Dark Hunters. I love wrapping the Greek mythology, actually a lot of different kinds of mythology, all into this. Um, specifically, though, the Dark Hunters created are controlled by Artemis, who is a bit of a bitch, in all honesty. She runs the Dark Hunters, she gives them orders. Their entire purpose is to save the earth from these things called daemons, which they're kind of like vampires. They are cursed to die when, I want to say they when they reach the age of 28 or somewhere thereabouts, it's in their 20s at some point, I'm pretty sure. The only way they can save themselves is to drink the blood of others and it kind of turns them into this cursed creature, so they have the option of dying or of turning into an evil being. And it is the purpose of the Dark Hunters to kill them before that happens, so there's definitely a war going on there. She writes a lot in New Orleans, that's where most of the series takes place, although it does tend to spread out across the world. 
Retribution is not one of the ones that I have read yet, hence why it was over on my TBR shelf, but it does follow the story of William Jessup Brady. I don't know anything else about it other than that. If the Dark Hunters interest you, a little bit more information on the series is that Dark Hunters are created by having been wronged terribly in their human life, and I believe it usually is something that ends in their murder or that causes them to die, and at that moment they are visited, usually by Artemis, who gives them the chance to get revenge on the person responsible for their death, and in return they get to live forever and have all of these powers. If they become a Dark Hunter, they are marked with her Dark Hunter mark, and they obey only her. These are a fantastic paranormal fantasy series. They are hilarious, they are steamy, they are just fantastic. I don't really know how else to describe it. I've been reading Dark Hunters since I was probably 13 or 14. I have read everything up to probably five or six years ago I was caught up and then I fell off of the wagon with it. I love the Dark Hunters. I will talk about them to anybody who will listen. Definitely give them a shot if any of that sounded interesting to you. All right, so there's another blind date with my bookshelves, guys. This was a lot of fun. As always, I can't wait to do another one of these, hopefully in another couple of months. Hopefully it won't take me too long. Hopefully I'll actually do it when I'm supposed to. It's always a good time reacquainting myself with the things that I have and whether I have read them or not, whether I should prioritize them or not. And it's a fun little way for you guys to look at just random things that I have on my bookshelves and learn a little bit maybe about a series that you you haven't heard before. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see any more content from me. Down in my description box you will see a rep code for Hello Lovely Box, which will get you a discount on your order with them. Underneath that are links to my Goodreads, my Twitter, and my Instagram in case you guys wanted to follow me on any of those. But that's it for me today guys, so I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!